Now, if you've never really had a chance to play with smart filters, we're going to look at that this time around because there's a couple things that aren't completely obvious the first time you do it. I want to make sure you take full advantage of this. If you've never seen it before, well, here you go. Smart filter is one of the new things in CS3. So I have my document open. This is a shot I took in Houston. I was lucky enough to get to a uh, press pass to a Houston Rockets game, which is very, very cool, and took some shots. But I want to try and do something to this so first of all we're going to convert it for smart filters and that really just means it's created a smart object you can see there's a little smart object symbol so that now means that I can do things to it now in CS2 one of the downsides to smart objects is you could not apply filters but now you can so if I do something like a motion blur and I'm gonna deliberately kind of go really overboard here so you can see it now a new part appears in the layers palette showing I have a smart filter and it's motion blur which means I can turn this on and off at will and I can also double click on it and say you know what that, that was probably a little much let me reduce it down a little bit but it also has this symbol here which is a layer mask symbol and what this basically lets me do is of course like a regular layer mask hide area so I'm going to take my paintbrush I've got the foreground color set to black and I'm just going to paint over Tracy McGrady a little bit, the parts that I don't want to be so blurry. Painting with black will hide the effects completely of this area. This will just give you the basic idea. Something like this. Now, at a certain point I could now say, even though I've got the mask, I could want to say, you know what, let's see if it would look like if it was even blurrier or less blurry. So you get the idea that you have that option. But the other thing that's really cool about this is this little icon right here, if you double click on this, it brings up another option which is blending options and opacity. So check this out, you can now lower the opacity of the filter you've applied. Kind of like fade, but interactive fade on an ongoing basis. And or we could try playing around with different blend modes to see what effect we got if we used different effects in here as well. So, as you can imagine, this opens up a whole world of possibilities. And the other really very nice thing about this is you can have multiple filters. So, let's also add some noise in here a little bit, just to make something really obvious. You can see that the layer mask has applied it, but also, again, in this case, I could say, you know, maybe that noise a little much, so let's just go in and fade that out so it's not quite so obvious. So, smart filters by themselves, very cool, but this little added bonus of this area right here, being able to adjust the blend mode and opacity, makes it even cooler. Now here's a weird thing about smart filters. I had added a bunch of smart filters and then hid them, and the eyeball that was here is just an empty space. So if you ever hide completely all the smart filters, you have to know that it's somewhere around here. So as you can see, you can have multiple smart filters applied to the same document, and without any trouble at all, you can edit them and change them and make things look really very, very ugly. <laughs> yeah. I'm Dave Cross, I think. I'll see you next time.